I want to talk about China because we are suddenly seeing this worryiness about a bubble. We've talked about it for weeks, if not months, but suddenly it seems to be coming into force, particularly those that are leveraged up, they're using borrowed money to buy the stocks. Is this the beginning of the end when it comes to the bull run that we've seen in, in China? Well, I think we have seen a, a very spectacular run up in, in Chinese equity prices. Uh, Shanghai Composite, even with what's been going on year to date, we're almost up 30%. So I think we have to set it a yeah. little bit in a, in a perspective of what's been happening. But to my mind, there, there are a couple of things that are quite important going on here. First of all, the underlying Chinese economy. We are going through tremendous transitions in China, and I think those are some of the things that ultimately the markets will come back and focus on, some of the more fundamental aspects going on. And again, there's a very big reform of the capital markets folding out. It's, it's a longer process. It's a multi-year process. We're seeing some of the things happening in the local government, uh, funding vehicles shifting to local government bond markets. We're seeing as well uh, clearly a, a will from the authorities to develop the equity market. And a key thing is to develop the equity market. What you don't want is you don't want these really big spikes up and then corrections. You want something that becomes a little bit more stable over time. So to my mind, what's happening now is, is probably not a bad thing from a long-term perspective, a, a bit of a, of a healthy adjustment to something that was uh, quite spectacular to watch. What about the IMF? reserve currency endorsement. This is something that we were talking about the longer term trends just then. This is something of a new opening up of the market. We'll see the yuan potentially become a reserve currency. Will it happen by 2015? Most economists seem to be telling us they will. Well, I, I think there's a good chance that it could happen this year. And that, that's quite important because, again, it's not an overnight revolution, but it will have important implications for the development of, of China's capital markets, the international role of the currency. But again, it's all part of a longer process. So so it's, it's this whole structural reform theme which is so important globally. And I think ultimately it's also very important just for the short-term stability of, of financial markets. One of the key elements is that we actually haven't seen any kind of effort from China to actively seek currency depreciation, what is often sort of termed a currency war here. And I think that's a key element of, of global financial stability. There, I think there are a couple of reasons why China is not actively pursuing currency depreciation, whereas we've seen it's been a, a policy where certainly the side effect of the currency has been a desired outcome uh, for other countries. One, the ambition to join the SDR. Two, China's own financial stability. And three, the financial stability for the Asia region and the global economy as a whole. So we do see that Chinese currency playing a key role here. And what about the rest of Southeast Asia seems to be the area of, of growth now, but we're looking at numbers coming out Nike, for example, China looking pretty good, but the rest of the emerging markets less so. What do you see for Asia in general over the course, as China does, does it open itself up? Well, there's a little bit of a mathematical secret to Chinese growth, because even as it slows, because it's growing more strongly than the rest of the world, China's share of the global economy continues to expand. So there's a little bit of math around the numbers. Our outlook is, I would say, it's, it's not a bad outlook. Um, we are looking for growth in the region. But I think some of those really impressive numbers that we became used to um, are, are probably not in the prospects. So it is a slower growth story uh, for, for the region as a whole. And if we turn it out to emerging economies more broadly, clearly what's been happening in the commodity space has impacted a number of economies. But the distinguishing factor, and I'm going to sound like a broken record on this, is those economies that can successfully achieve reform. We've seen it again and again. That's where the growth ultimately comes.